This video is based on the marketing mix, but specifically focusing on the pricing strategies. The video will look at two very specific types of pricing strategies, which is very, very common in the majority of GCSE and A-level specifications for business studies. So these two pricing strategies, as you can see from the diagram, is price skimming and penetration pricing. And again, as you can see from the diagram, price skimming has a high entry price, whilst penetration pricing has a low entry price. Now the expectation is, is that price skimming, you will enter the market with a brand new product setting a high initial price. The reason you do that is because there's probably very little or no competition in the market. So if you can set a high price whilst there's no competition, and when the competition when the competition starts to enter the market, then the price will start to fall. With penetration pricing, it's the complete opposite. So it's the price technique of setting a relatively low initial entry price, and the reason for that is probably because there's a lot of competition in the market, and the market is, is rather saturated. So what they do is they set a lower price than they're intended to actually offer, but they do it to attract new customers. So they try to attract customers from existing brands, to trial this new product and there's less of a risk because the price is much lower. And the strategy aims to encourage customers to switch but then once they switch to become loyal to that company so even when the product does go up in price they continue to buy it. So again if we go back to the diagram it's a high entry price for a price skimming and then the price will go lower when competition enters the market. And with penetration pricing, it's a low entry price to so try and get the customers to switch. And once the customers have switched, then they can put it in line with their competitors. So the first one that we're going to focus on is price skimming. Now, price skimming is very, very common for products which are rather innovative. They could be technical, uh, technological. They probably have a, high, a unique selling point. And what they do, they successfully add value to this product when they launch it, which justifies a higher price. And because customers, especially those early adopters, as we can see there, there's innovators, there's early adopters, there's early majority, those um, customers, they want to get the product as soon as it's launched, or they want to get it very, very quickly, and therefore they are willing to pay a higher price. So I'm just going to show you a video now as an example of Apple when they released the, um, the iPhone X. We're here outside the Apple Store in Regent Street, London for the launch of the eagerly anticipated iPhone X. There are queues stretching around the block. It's about 200 people here waiting for a chance to buy one. Yeah. Uh, first night we slept in a tent, second night we just chosen all to stay awake and just go through the night so none of us have slept here in the queue. It's only a thousand pounds, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting two, man. <laughs> So at 8.30, the iPhone 10 has been on sale for about half an hour, and the queue, as you can see, still stretches around the block. We've just been inside to have a play. First impressions, it's a beautiful phone, the screen is gorgeous, and the Animojis feature, which lets you turn your face into an emoji using its new facial recognition technology, is extremely cool and intuitive. Overall, it's a nice phone, but it's, it's a thousand pounds, and that's got to be a deal breaker for a lot of people, probably myself included.
So as you can see from the video, you had those innovators who were willing to wait 36 hours and queue up before it was even launched. And obviously in the coming months after it was launched, you'll get the early adopters that have to have the, the, the newest gadget as well. Um, and these behavioral segments, they are willing to pay the higher prices. They're not willing to wait for any other products to be launched, which might bring down this price. Whilst at the other end of the spectrum, you might get customers who are thinking, oh, I'll just give it a year. Samsung will launch their new phone. Apple, they're going to drop the price at some point. That's when I'll pay it. But price skimming works for the innovators, the early adopters, the early majority customers who are willing to pay the higher prices because they have to have that gadget as soon as it's launched. And as you could see the video, um, there was new features, there was new functions. So you could argue that the fact that it was sold out so quickly, it is successfully adding value and it's justifying why it's coming out at a higher price. And it justifies that there is going to be demand. So... When we're looking at, obviously, um, iPhone X as a brand new product, it is part of a series of products as well. And I suppose what you have to look at is, well, how does it compare to products that have been launched in the past? Now, we could bring in price elasticity of demand. Now, price elasticity of demand might not be considered within the GCSE specification for all business studies specs or exam boards. But if you wanted to challenge yourself and stretch yourself, I'd definitely be looking at it. Now, for A-level, it will be considered as part of the specification. So when we're looking at price elasticity of demand, the formula is simply the percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in price. And pretty much what it looks at is, well, when there is a change in price, how responsive are customers? So when we're looking at price skimming, it works really, really well when the price elasticity of demand is inelastic. And what that means is that customers are not very responsive. So if you change the price, the likelihood is the majority of customers will still pay that price. And again, because of how Apple are able to add value. So as I've written here, price elasticity of demand considers the responsiveness of quantity demanded from customers to a change in price. So therefore, when Apple launched new products with a higher price, if the percentage change in quantity demanded is less then the percentage change in price, we could consider it to be price inelastic in demand and this would support the use of price skimming because customers would still be buying the phone and therefore total revenue for Apple would be going up. The next pricing strategy is penetration pricing. And as mentioned previously and as shown by the diagram, it is the opposite with a low initial entry price. Now, some examples you can see on the slide, but uh, again, I see it quite regularly with the magazine industry. So clearly you have established magazines that have been in the market for some time. They've got a loyal readership. Uh, and therefore, if you're going to launch a brand new magazine, uh, how are you going to attract customers to switch from these magazines they've been reading for years? Well, by price, by offering a very low price to, um, to make it so it's not much of a risk just to trial it out, just to see if you like it. And what they're hoping for is that you do like it and you continue to buy it in the future, even if the price goes up. So we can see that Netflix did something similar when they first entered the market, especially with regards to the standard and the premium product. So the standard, their, their old price or their initial price was £7.49 or $9.99 and the premium was £8.99 and $11.99. But then once they started to get more um, of a loyal customer base and started to see those subscriptions rise, then they started to increase the price of the standard and the premium. Now, again, what you tend to find is this is common when it's a very, very competitive market. And if it's a very, very competitive market, then you would expect the market to be price elastic. So again, what I mean by that is if there's a change in price, customers are going to be very, very responsive. So you can imagine going down a supermarket aisle and going, for example, down the chocolate aisle and seeing the, the large range of chocolate bars that are uh, available to, to purchase. Now, if any of them increase their prices, you'd probably find that customers would respond very, very quickly and decide not to buy it. So in that case, if you enter the market with a low price, you might get customers willing to switch from chocolate bars that they've bought in the past to this one, uh, again, because of how elastic it might be. So 
I'm, I'm using KitKat as an example because as we can look at the American data in terms of price elasticity of demand, KitKat has a minus 2.1. Now, for those students who are um, doing our GCSE and not quite sure about price elasticity of demand yet, that simply means that the percentage change in quantity demanded is greater than the percentage change in price, meaning that customers are very, very responsive. So as I've written here, as you can see in the diagram, if the market, the company is entering as many substitutes, by offering a low initial price, customers are more likely to be responsive to a change in that price and therefore entice the switch from more established brands to trial the new product. So you'll get customers willing to switch and willing to try it. If they like it, they'll hopefully become loyal and they'll buy it, as this diagram shows here. So what you get to begin with is that customers are uh, willing to buy it but as they become more loyal, then it, the elasticity of demand becomes more inelastic and we start to see that long-term demand actually being inelastic because customers are now willing to pay the higher price uh, and they're willing to buy it regardless. Now, what challenges that is obviously pricing techniques and if you can bring in a very low price, then you can, number one, disrupt that elasticity and you could possibly make that market less inelastic or you could create loyalty in your brand and over time you're hoping that your product becomes inelastic.